Beginning of the second round of Licking County League basketball for 1990-91. The final league meeting between the Utica Redskins and the Licking Valley Panthers live from Licking Valley High School. I'm Steve Rosenberger along with Denny Morris. Glad you could join us tonight for this LCL matchup before a full house at Licking Valley. Both teams with records of six wins, six... Licking Valley is two and five in the league. They're three and three at home. Utica four and three LCL, which ties them for third with Newark Catholic behind co-leaders Heath and Watkins. The Redskins have won three of their last four games, but stand only two and four on the road this season. Denny Utica has won three of the last five meetings between the schools, but prior to that, Licking Valley had a long win streak dating back to the 84-85 season. The first meeting this year was at Utica on December 7th, and the Redskins bolted to a 17-9 lead at the end of the first quarter. They were up 42-27 at halftime. Red Nick had 43-27 and rolled to a 9-point win, 69-60, and that really started looking Valley's problems, although at one point, you look back, Valley was 4-2, and two, Utica was 2-4. and four. Since then, Valley's gone 2-4, and four, Utica 4-2, and two. so the two teams' seasons have mirrored one another. Well, again, when you start one and it builds confidence when you start losing it's very hard to turn that confidence around just looking out there at the Utica Redskins they are putting on a three-point exhibition and some of their taller ball players are the shooters but I think I have to agree with you Licking Valley have to, has to dominate inside early and turn things around if not it's going to be a long night for the, for the Panthers we had a down the wire reserve game tonight as the Utica reserves pulled out a 51 48 victory over the JV team from Licking Valley thanks to a late steal by Aaron Jones which short circuited the Licking Valley comeback. Well, again, uh, Coach Holman has uh, started to turn things around. But you mentioned Utica. Bill Rogers is up there for, what, four years and he turned around the program even though he's not there. Some of these players were on his program and he may have started things and Coach Chip Hartman is just kind of polishing things up. The red and gray of Utica, the red, white, and blue of Licking Valley. We're almost set to the night's opening tip-off. Back with the starting lineups in just a moment on the Sports Voice of Licking County, 101.7 WNKO. Serving you is our specialty at Apple Valley Cardinal Markets. We have two convenient locations, South Main Street, Utica, and 2165 West High in Hanover. Let Apple Valley Cardinal and Utica make any occasion a little easier with their all-occasion catering service. And at Hanover Apple Valley Cardinal, we're expanding our store to serve you better. So come visit us today at either Apple Valley Cardinal Market, Utica, or Hanover. Apple Valley Cardinal, we try harder to serve you better. Are you tired of those buy one pizza and get an identical one free deals that always seem to taste like cardboard? Well, let's face it. If you use the best ingredients, you'll end up with the best tasting pizza. And that's exactly what you'll find at any of the three area pizza makers locations, including Grand Villa in Granville, Plaza at the corner of Mount Vernon and Waterworks Road, and Park Pizza at 354 Union Street. So stay away from those cardboard pizzas and enjoy a hot and delicious real pizza from Pizza Makers. They're in the yellow pages. Ten bucks won't get you much these days, right? Well, at Kentucky Fried Chicken, $9.99 will get you the new Super Bucket. 15 pieces of the Colonel's original or extra tasty crispy chicken or a 10-piece dinner, which includes a large helping of mashed potatoes, large gravy, four biscuits, and a large side item. Remember, that's the new Super Bucket. 15 pieces of original or extra tasty crispy chicken or a 10-piece dinner, which feeds four for just $9.99. Truly, 10 bucks that will get you something. And you even get a penny back, which will get you nothing. Kentucky Fried Chicken on Cedar Street, just off the expressway. If you've got a great joke, here's what to do. Call the Insider Joke Line at 1-800-366-4699 and tell it. Then listen to the Insider's oldest living stand-up comic, Jackie Jerry, to see if you're the new owner of a way cool CD player. Catch Dave Jolin's Insider every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. until noon on Newark's only popular music station, 101.7 FM, WNKO. Steve Rosenberger back at Licking Valley High School, the Licking Valley Panthers, the Utica Redskins set to do battle. Denny, let's get right to the lineups. First of all, for the homestanding Panthers of Valley. The Licking Valley, Steve, will be in their white with blue numerals and their contrasting team. Utica pretty much uh, 
underclassman Lincoln Valley starts four seniors and a junior. The junior will be one of the wingmen. He's junior Jimmy Holman at 6'2". Joined with them at the other side will be Scott Bavard, a six-foot senior. The point guard, the quarterback, is little Rob Biscay. He's listed in the program as 5'9". And then two double posts underneath will be Lance Miller. He's the small post at 6'3". And Clay Williams is the big post at 6'8". So we got Holman, Bavard, and Biscay out on top. Miller and Williams underneath. Tremendous size advantage for the Panthers. The Utica lineup, hard to pick out positions for these players because they all stand between 5'9 and 6'1. In the backcourt will be Dave Mielek, 5'9 the senior. Mark Cannon, a 5'9 senior is also, I'm sorry, a 5'11 senior is also a starter for Utica. As are Ben Russell, six feet tall and a sophomore. Sophomore David Hale, who stands 6'1 and 6'1 junior Alan Barrasso. So Utica starts the two seniors, Mielek and Kennan, along with three underclassmen, sophomores Russell and Hale, and the junior Barrasso. Utica dressed in red with the white numerals and gray and white trim. I'll tell you, Steve, with what's going on in the Mideast, we couldn't ask for the better colors tonight. Red, white, and blue. And as I was uh, left the station tonight, I was informed that if there's any late-breaking action in the Mideast, which we really hope there's not, the game will be preempted and will join the network, and Mike's back there running the board, so we'll keep the people not only up to date on the sports, but also the, with the news tonight. Clay Williams at 6'8", 6'1", David Hale stepping into the center circle. Valley moving right to left, which means they'll be going toward the band in the stage area in the first period of play. Now a spread offense jump. And, and Williams decisively taps the ball out of bounds on the near sideline. It goes to Utica with a minute, or rather a second, having elapsed on the first quarter clock. Interesting. Your big height advantage, and you tip it out of bounds. you got to tip it to a ball player. Valley in the 1-3-1 defense, and it's a little bit different look because Jimmy Holman's now on the point with Rob Biscay running the baseline. Milik lobs left side to Hale behind the arc. Now it's Milik foul line, jumping it to Russell, feeding a low post, intending to pass for DeVarasso. It got by him and was stolen by Scott DeVard. Well, one official is Jim Bickle, which is an assistant football coach over at Denison University. Valley works against the Utica man-to-man. Biscay fires a long two-pointer from the left wing, and he got it. Rob Biscay putting Lincoln Valley up 2-0. Milik down quickly across the floor to Russell. Now Kennan jump past Hale on the right baseline. On the low block for Rasso, working on Williams, sending it out to Russell. Nice feed, it's Kennan. The baseline jumper's no good, and Williams plays the defensive rebound. 2-0 Valley, the Panthers in possession. Biscay finds Pavard along the left sideline, played by Russell. Outside, Holman against Kennan. Jimmy starts to drive down the right side of the lane. Good help by Barrasso, and the pass comes outside to Pavard. Now Biscay off to Holman, long jump shot right wing off the iron, and the rebound kicks out to Dave Mielek. Mielek forcing the action, floats into the lane, sets up Barrasso low, and the oh, shot is slowly out of the bounds by Clay Williams. Now, Barrasso and Williams are mixing that get up pretty good inside. Right now, the officials letting them play, but Williams a little late down the paint, but he put that one up in the bleachers. It was the intended layup from the left side of the basket, and Williams knocked it out of bounds on the sideline with a clean block. And now, one of the officials is talking to Coach Torbert about the basketball. Evidently, it's not bouncing well enough to suit the men in stripes so or the players, and Coach Torbert is looking around trying to find another ball to use. Well, either that, uh, when he hit the ball, knocked half the air out of it, or what, but that's one of the first things officials do, even when we're back in the locker room, is test the uh, ball as far as bounce, and it's, we play about a minute and a half, Steve. So the two coaches have a chance for a conversation. They choke between themselves as the ball is retrieved from the Lucking Valley locker room, and that one will be put in play. It's Utica possession, far side, 6.39 to go first quarter, and the Panthers of Licking Valley hold a 2 nothing edge. Well, I don't know, maybe the officials are thinking about taking a little bit of air out of this one. Looks like that might be the case, and now we're set to go. Mark Kennan will step out at the end of the Utica bench to put the ball in play. 
He bounces to Dave Felix, and we're back underway. 1-3-1 one, one zone for Valley. Russell behind the three-point arc on the left. He rifles it to Barrasso. Out front, Felix. Right side, Hale. And now Kennan in the right corner. To stay there defensively. Kennan brings it out toward the hash mark. Off to Barrasso. Quickly, Russell. The baseline drive. The left-handed scoop. No good. Barrasso on the board. He's smothered by Williams. And here comes Holman on the break. And Holman goes to the basket and takes the short shot. Scoring from the right side. I think uh, Mr. Williams has come tonight to play basketball. 4-0 Valley. Williams with two block shots in the early going. Foul line Hale to Russell left corner. Double teamed by Miller and Barrasso and Biscay. The pass to Barrasso knocked out of bounds. It stays with Utica underneath the basket. Now well, Clay says he's intending to play ball at the University of Indiana. So we've got another Big Ten ball player. Here's Bielek driving all the way to the basket, and he draws the blocking foul from Scott Brevard, who was shaken up. It appeared that he took a knee in the upper leg, and Brevard trying to stretch out the injury as Bielek heads to the free throw line to shoot two. A couple of our football players in the fall go out here. I don't know which one came up with the better end of the deal. Both of them bending over at the moment. Bielek to get... A two-shot opportunity, his team down 4 nothing, and now it's 4-1 as he switched the first one. Dave averaging 13.7 points per game on the season. Just inside the six-minute mark, you take his first point. Second free throw also perfect, and it's 4-2 Valley. Now Utica shows full-court man-to-man pressure. This day to Holman, who's fouled from behind by Barrasso. Allen had a... A forearm in the back of Holman as the pass arrived, and Barrasso is tagged with his first foul. I believe that's the first team foul on either team, and again, we've played uh, just about two minutes, and Utica wanting to tempo it up. Watch inside. Watch Williams, Steve. He's posted to the right side of the lane against Barrasso. Now the double team by Hale as Bavar takes the ball into the lane, all the way to the hoop, and he scores the layup. Bavard weaving through defenders to make it a 6-2 game. At the other end, Barrasso sends it back to Mielek. Now Barrasso takes the pass underneath, and it's knocked to the bounds by Williams, reaching over the top. He looked inside and saw Williams and says, I'm not going to even try to shoot against him. Russell to Barrasso, right corner. One dribble on the bounce pass to Kennan. Out front, it's Russell, doesn't shoot, instead sets up Hale, who shots deflected by Biscay into the hands of Williams. Biscay throws it away, trying to hit Holman, who commits a foul on Mark Kennan, who made the interception. But Rob Biscay says it's my fault as he exchanges a five with Jimmy Holman because Biscay threw the errant pass, which resulted in the Kennan interception. You know, Steve, Biscay is just about two steps ahead of everyone, and maybe one of the reasons why Valley has the record is that he's just a different style ball player. Valley averaging over 20 turnovers per game. Barrasso bouncing to Russell, taking his shot from the left baseline, and he scores. Ben Russell, the Redskins' top point maker on the season, makes it a 6-4 game. That's just like Dad told him to shoot. Here's Williams on the low block right side. Fouls, his shot rattles in. It'll count as Alan Barrasso is tagged with his second personal. Coach Hartman up exclaiming that he was fouled before the shot, but they're going to count the hoop. Williams becomes the fourth Valley player to score, and it's 8-4 with 4.53 remaining in the period. Well, Steve, you and I both know that's pretty much Williams' bread and butter shot. Just outside the block area, turnaround jumper. He's got that range zeroed in. Free throw is good. Play completes the three-point play and makes it a five-point lead for Licking Valley. Utica now against the 1-3-1. Russell fires for three. Left wing, he switched it. Five points for Mr. Russell. Quickly 9-7. Russell totals five. Lance Miller left side into the paint. Hooks it up and doesn't get the roll. But there's Holman to follow and score. First shot that Lincoln Valley has missed, but they turn it into an offensive score. Right corner, Hale arches it up and hits a three. David Hale's rainbow makes it 11-10 Panthers. Biscay driving at the other end. Banks and misses. Williams can't hit the follow. And the deflected rebound goes to Miller. Hammers it in.
pace being set in the first quarter. Milik over the timeline, gets a high screen from Barrasso. Bavard picks him up. Now Russell firing for three. Got the good again. He makes it look easy. Eight points. 13-13 as Utica makes quick work of the early Valley lead. Williams low, powers it up, and he has two more. Give him five, but again, they're just trading threes for twos. 15-13, and we still have 3.15 left in the period as Verasso drive and was fouled before the shot by Clay Williams. I don't know, maybe Biscay got him when he hooked him around. Clay Williams charged with his first, team second, and it will be a spot throw-in for the Redskins as Verasso was fouled on the floor. Still some contact underneath with Barassa right in the middle. Russell inbounds to Kenlin, left corner. Between the circles, Milik moves to the free throw line, tried to hit Kenlin low. He was fouled by Lance Miller. Miller is complaining that he had someone go over his back, but again, the only way you're going to shoot some foul shots, Steve, as you know, you've got to penetrate the paint area. You can't shoot three-pointers all night. The last two times, it's what Utica has done is penetrate. Redskin ball on the baseline. Russell to trigger the inbounds play. Holds up two fingers to signal the play. And then fires it outside to Milik. Milik top of the key, covered by Holman. Shovels to Russell. Long three from the right of the key is short. An air ball into the hands of Miller, but he bounced it off Jimmy Holman's heel. And it's out of bounds on the sideline to the Redskins. Now you heard Coach Torres say we could be 11-1. And, and it's those little things that keep you from winning close ball games. Panthers by two as we roll under two minutes. There's the lob pass intended for Kennan off the backboard, picked up by Hale, and he rolls it in from the right side. Five for David Hale, and the game even at 15. Holman right side of the key, cross courts it to Bavard. Bavard covered by Russell and the Redskin man to man. Now Holman lobs to Williams. Williams up between defenders, no good. Miller short with the follow and the rebound to Utica as a foul is called on Scott Bavard. Well, Scott picks up his first. That's the team's fourth. The only one in the starting lineup without a foul is Rob Biscay. So from here on out, or did they say that was the fifth? Two for Brevard and one each for Miller and Williams. But okay. No argument from Dick Torbert as Mark Kennan goes to the line for one and one. I didn't have that been the second one for Scott Brevard. Kennan nails the first free throw. First oh. lead. Fourth, fourth. Redskin to score. Among the ten starters, only Barrasso is not on the board with 2.33 still to play in the first period. Second foul shot, good, and it's 17-15 Redskins. Utica pressing full court. Biscay hooks it down the floor to Williams, spinning to the hoop, and he drops in a five-footer on the right baseline. He has seven. He needs to keep this tempo up. Williams scored 14 in the first game against Utica. Here's Kenlin to the basket, drawing a foul, and I think that's three on Scott Bavard. He tried to get out of the way, but made body contact as Kenlin plowed to the basket. That's going to hurt because Scott is a fine all-around ball player. Good on the boards, but he's going to be spinning, I would say, that most of the rest of the first half on the bench. Trent Saforza, the 6-1 senior, replaces Scott Bavard. He's the game's first substitute. 216 showing on the first quarter clock. Eric Cannon made two just seconds earlier. And he's now three for three as he uses the rim to score. And Utica is a perfect five of five from the free throw line. Kennan, an 8.7 average on the season, second free throw on the money. 19-17 Redskins, and Biscay taps it over the timeline to support. It's a nice pass in the lane, and Holman's layup. No, tipped by Williams. Good. Williams with nine, and again, second and third shots of the basket. Milik forcing the action. This called for traveling as he sidestepped Jimmy Holman out top. Second turnover for the Redskins, but again, I think the fans thought there was a region on that. 
Day brings it up. Bielek awaits in the Redskin man-to-man. Bounce pass right side. Holman against Kennan. Low Williams. Baseline turnaround short. Rebound kept alive by Miller. Picked up by Saforza. His 14th quarter is perfect. Fade away. Nice coming him off the bench. But again, offensive rebounds are ruined. 21-19 Valley. Russell circles around Saforza, passes to Kennan, now left corner, Hale for three, no, rebound tapped off Williams' hands to Hale. Utica with another chance, Barrasso in the corner, shuffling to Hale on the left wing. Now it's Kennan moving to the foul line and setting up Milik. Milik watched by Saforza, dumps a load to Barrasso, pass broken up, Kennan recovers, misses badly on the left side fadeaway, and here comes Piscay on the run for the Panthers. Lead pass on the baseline to Saforza. He leaves it for Williams. Ball knocked loose. Holman recovers, shoots and misses. And Utica's Ben Russell has the ball. Russell trying to bounce pass to Barrasso. And the play broken up by Biscay, who knocks it over the baseline. Uh, Steve, Lincoln Valley already 19 shots on the offensive end. 14 to 4, the rebounding edge goes to the Panthers. Kennan takes the inbounds pass, sends it out front to Bielek. Now Russell behind the Kennan screen for three, not good. Rebounded by Saforza. Panthers by two with the ball. Miller driving, committing an offensive foul. Barrasso took the charge, but Miller appeared to have his mind made up as soon as he caught the ball that he was going to the basket. Well, 41 seconds, he has two. I think Coach Sherman is up off the bench and saying that he couldn't change his direction, but... The call stands, so he has two. He's still in the ball game. The has got three on the bench. The foul problems mounting for Dick Torbert as Looking Valley seeks the tying basket with 35 seconds in the quarter. Valley in a 1-3-1. Right side line, Russell. Now between the circles, it's Mielek. Moves into the key. Bounce pass for Rasso. Outside, Russell covered by Saforza. Now it's Bielek going cross-court to Barrasso, taking it up on the right side. The shot was blocked by Williams, but Saforza committed the body foul. Williams getting his third or fourth or fifth block, but before that he got his foul. But again, you can just see that with Utica with that three-point threat, it's extended that 1-3-1 one, one out a little further. It's making it more effective on the offensive side. Barrasso's free throw perfect, and while Looking Valley has done the job on the offensive board, it's been Utica's foul shooting that has kept them in the game. Barrasso's second one is short, and Williams finally controls the rebound with 18 seconds. 21-20 Valley, pull up right side by Holman, off the rim, no, and Hale, an aggressive defensive rebound. Inside 10 seconds. Russell front court going to the basket to the hoop underhand scoop yes it counts and he was fouled. He didn't even look at the clock and out here at Lincoln Valley we only have the one clock on the home side the stage side of the gym. He just took it to the hoop underhand scoop and give him two more points ten points for the night. Clay Williams commits his second foul. And Russell with a chance for a three-point play. Only four seconds remain. Redskins by one, make it two. Russell with the free throw, and now Biscay flying up the floor, throwing up a three at the horn, no good. And one quarter is complete on Licking Valley. It's a good one. Utica 23, Licking Valley 21 on WNKO. Since 1963, Houston Plumbing and Heating has been keeping homes warm and energy efficient with worry-free furnace protection. Houston Plumbing and Heating will inspect your furnace to make sure it's working safely and efficiently so you won't be wasting money on a furnace that no longer gives you the comfort your home needs. And if your furnace needs replaced, Houston Plumbing and Heating will install a new furnace for as little as $920. Houston Plumbing and Heating has 24-hour emergency service so call today for a free estimate at 763-4397. Houston Plumbing and Heating, 724 Montgomery Road. Are escalating energy prices taking a big bite out of your wallet? Licking Rural Electric has a program to help its consumers heat more economically. The dual fuel heating system utilizes an add-on electric heat pump and a gas or oil furnace. Qualifying members may receive up to a $400 rebate and a one and a half cent per kilowatt hour discount on electricity used by the heat pump. Contact Licking Rural Electric for more information. Non-stop.
stop action in the first quarter, which ends with Utica ahead by two. Valley inbounds to start the second. Holman leaves the ball out front to Biscay. Now foul line extended. It's Miller whipping it left corner to Saforza. Two point jumpers off the back iron. Holman had the rebound slapped out of his hands. It's off of David Hale. Out of bounds to the Panthers. First quarter, Steve Licking Valley, 10 of 21, 49%. Utica, 6 of 16, 37%. Saforza shaking free for the inbounds pass, unable to score. Hale sends it down the floor to Mila. He finds Barasso, who fakes, shoots, and scores. And they've got their running game going right now. A 6-0 run has put Utica in front, 25-21. Holman short in the right baseline, and Williams and Russell tied up with the rebound. The held ball goes to Utica. First quarter rebounding, Licking Valley 16, Utica 5. But again, the three-point shots and the free throw gave Utica the lead. Valley in the 1-3-1. Russell on the wing left side, out to Mielek, holding the ball above his head, now starting a dribble. Russell fakes the threes, begins to drive, and sees it slapped away from behind out of bounds by Rob Biscay. Russell inbounding. Pounds the ball, looks for help, tried to force it in the lane, stolen by Saforza. Another good pass. Here's Saforza on the break, leaving it nicely for Miller, who's fouled going in. Now during the line will be Lance Miller. Utica unofficially. Eight of nine from the free throw line in the first quarter. Licking Valley, one of one. Licking Valley's Alan Barrasso has just been saddled with his third foul. Scott Bavard out with three for Valley. And Len Hartman will make his first substitute as Miller misses on the first foul shot. Josh Code, who started most of last year, a 6'2 senior, reports in replacing Alan Barrasso. You mentioned that Utica looks like they're beginning to turn things around. They are playing right now with a lot of confidence. They do not play like a team with nearly a 500 record. Miller's second of two free throws is perfect. Lance has three. It's 25-22 Redskins. Milik works to the right side. Bounce pass Russell, covered by Saforza. He gets it back to Milik. Lob pass intended for Russell, slapped out of bounds on the sideline. Saforza playing some strong defense on the wing of Valley Zone. Inbounding will be David Hale, the 6'1 sophomore. Off to Milik. Pulls up at the arc. Passes cross court to Josh Code. Code lobbing for Russell. Miss Hamlet it. Had to bring it back out. Sends it to Kennan left corner, and Kennan connects. Nice fake by Russell. Kennan gets his first basket. Six points in the first half. Kennan from Russell to make it 27 22 Utica. Foul lines to force of the open 14. Further, he got it. I'm surprised that they still haven't gone inside that much to Williams. 27-24. Kennan posting against Williams. Bounces out to Hale on the left. Bank shot's no good. Holman with the rebound. Escape across the timeline. Met by Milik. Pass goes to the force. Guns for three. It's no good. Long. Chased down in the right corner by Holman. Now Biscay driving from the wing, shooting on the move, and Rob Biscay hits. Not a pretty shot, but give him four points. 27-26. Back comes Licking Valley. Russell near the right corner. Biscay pressuring. Now the bounce pass low. Cannon circling around. Williams in the reverse layup goes. Intelligent move underneath by Mark Kennan, who has eight in the half. And now the pass forced to Williams, and the foul was going to be whistled against David Hale of Utica. That time, Lincoln Valley got it right because uh, Williams didn't even know the pass was coming. He gets one, the team's four, so it's a spot throw-in for the Panthers. Lance Miller puts the ball in play with the short flip left side to Holman. Code on Holman. Now it's Biscay, the post feed, Williams, turn around, two points. Give him 11 the first half, and again, that's where they've got to go, is they've got to go in the paint. Drop Biscay, the assists. Russell finding Milik to the right of the circle. He'll bounce for Code behind the arc. Lob pass over the head of Hale, baseline left, out of bounds to the Panthers. A little indecisive to where they wanted to go with the ball. And I think they had Lincoln Valley over zone. Valley can take the lead with a score on this possession. 
Coleman using up his dribble, and he was fouled by Josh Code over guarding in the right corner. Well, Josh picks up number one, but now both teams shooting the one and one. And I think Jimmy Holman will be shooting the bonus. Valley only 50% of the team in the free throw line this year. Holman individually has hit 59%, 17 of 29. Yeah, when, is there a Murphy's Law that says if it goes wrong, it will go wrong? Something like that. Free throw by Holman is dead center. Jimmy earns the bonus by scoring his fifth point. Holman had 14 in the first game against Utica. Jimmy, the only non-senior in the starting lineup. Second free throw, also good. Valley in front, 30 to 29. Left corner code, covered by Biscay. One dribble on the pass to Mielek. Mielek pops a 17-footer, too strong. Russell keeps it alive, and it's knocked out over the top of the backboard. And off of Clay Williams, it'll belong to Utica under the basket. And Russell calls out play number four. And inbounds with the lob outside to Milik. Milik drives foul line. Bounce pass Russell. Making right wing. Circling into the lane. Nice bounce feed to Kennedy. Who was fouled by Biscay. I'll tell you. Russell is listed as a sophomore. He has more moves than I've seen. I have some seniors. And he'll get the line to shoot. Or no, it's Kennedy shoot. And then took the pretty backhand feed from Russell. Went strong to the basket and got the foul from Rob Biscay, who has one. Kennan's free throw circles the rim, but won't go down. And it remains 30-29 Valley. Second quarter has been kind of boring. 44 points scored between the two teams the first quarter. Not much the second. Kennan connects, give him nine, and tie the game at 30. Biscay threw a double team. Off to Saforza left side. Tried to hit Holman streaking down the lane. It was tipped out of bounds. The two officials look at one another, and now they award the ball to Utica, bringing the Valley coaching staff up off the bench. The Redskins trying to take advantage, and Biscay fouls Code, bidding for an interception in the left corner. Biscay second. Code shoots a Redskin 1-1. And Biscay comes across, shakes the hand of Code, but again, he picks up two. Already on the boot is Miller with two and Williams with two. Brevard has three, and fouls are very quickly mounting. Josh Code nailing the first free throw. Utica continues to make Valley pay for the fouls. Code, the 6'2 senior, comes in averaging just over six points per game. Seven players average over five and a half points for the Redskins. Makes Code another. I'm sorry, Denny. 32-30 Redskins. Biscay passes nicely to Williams. Two on one, and Williams is hammered by David Hale. He did a good job of preventing the layup and gets congratulations from his teammates. I'll tell you, Hale did not back away. I'm sure he's going to give up about 80 pounds to Williams. So Williams is going to have to earn the points from the free throw line. And you mentioned this is not a specialty. Williams on the season hitting 55% from the strike. Senior's first one off the iron, no good. He has 11, but it's been held to two points here in the second quarter. Clay coming off a 30-point night last Saturday against Johnstown. He averages 14.4 on the season. Second shot. No, offensive board to Forza. He missed the follow, but the rebound tapped out to Williams, and Valley resets. Biscay's pass kicked by Russell, but there's no whistle. Biscay gets it back from Holman and drains the two-point jumper. Six for Biscay as Milik floats to the basket. Gets the ball to Kennan in traffic. Shot blocked by Williams, but Russell banks it in. Russell with 13, the first two to the corner. But Here's Biscay going behind his back. He missed the layup, and Williams can't score at the follow. Now Milik ahead to Kennan, and he has pounded by Saporza, and Kennan will earn two free throws. You have to like it, Steve. They're not backing off one bit. Saforza has two fouls. 
also with two are Miller, Williams, and Biscay, and Bavard sitting with three. Mark Cowan to the free throw line, where he has already scored nine points tonight. Not all of them have come from the free throw line, but his nine points. Better his per game average of 8.7. Five for six from the line, and Mr. Bickle walks between the players and say, let's back off a little bit. Cannon drills another. He's in double figures already. He had only seven points in the first ballot game, and his league high this year is 14. Last time out against Watkins. Second shot's off the rim, and Miller snares the rebound. Holman slows down front court. Right corner, Saforza. Cross court pass, finds Biscay open. He's fouled by Ben Russell. I don't know how he shook loose, and I, again, I don't know how Saforza got the pass to him, but again, a little rob his kid, took it hard to the basket. And Russell picks up his first. Rob will be shooting two. Biscay, the team's top foul shooter on the season at 67%. Left-hander's first one, perfect. Seven points for Rob, left-hander, and he has made it exciting the last three years here at Lincoln Valley. He was exceptional in both Utica games last year with 19 and 21 point efforts, and he hits again. Eight for Biscay, sixth in the quarter. Here's Kenan Lowe, shot blocked by Williams. Russell has it, left-handed hook, no good. Cleared by Miller. Valley ball, they're down by one, and Miller fouled in the backcourt by Russell. That's what you call a stupid foul. They've already got the ball. You don't commit a foul in the backcourt. Lance Miller earns a one and one with 3.34 left before halftime. Neither team has had more than a five-point lead. Miller, the 6'3 senior, has really come on in recent games. He makes the first foul shot, giving him four points tonight. He hit 17 against Johnstown, which followed back-to-back 15-point -back performances. Second shot also good. Very nice young man, too. Soft-spoken and pleasant to talk to. Valley ahead, 36-35. Milik jumping at left corner to Code, and he has his pocket picked by Biscay. Lead pass too far for Miller, who chases it down, makes the save, but throws it out of bounds at the right sideline. It goes to Utica. Dude, this is a fun game to watch. Both teams are uh, just mixing it up, and they're going at each other. Neelix slows the pace at the timeline. Off to Hale behind the arc on the right. Now on the wing, Code back to Hale, returning it to Code, who moves to the baseline. Bounce pass in the crowd, Kennan. Outside, Neelix, three Off points. Jumper, no, it's short, and Saforza claims the defensive rebound. Biscay, four court. Off to Saforza, left side. Now in the paint, it's Williams for the hook. He got it. 13 for play. Saforza the assist. Williams has 13. And Kennan, the reverse layup as he flew down the right baseline. It's no good. Cleared by Williams. Now Miller, bounce past Saforza. Left side drive. His shot won't go. Cleared by Kennan. Off to Russell. Russell facing Williams. Shoots the pull up for two. He nailed it. Gets the call, but he has 15. And back and forth we go. 38-37 Panthers. Miller to Williams, who is fouled on the catch by David Hale. But again, a nice move there by Clay. He's spotted up on the opposite block. The ball went to Miller at the top of the key, and he cut across. Was fouled by Hale on a hold. But Clay that time was breaking to the ball. A lineup change for Utica. Hale leads to an ovation with two fouls, I mean, sorry, three fouls and five points, and he's replaced by Dave Armstrong, a 5'11 senior. Well, Hale and Barrasso with three. Williams' free throw is short. Rebound caroms to Ben Russell. Judith has the ball down by one. Two minutes to go in the half. Milik shooting over Williams. He hits from 12 feet away. His first basket. Four points for Milik. Holman looks to answer, shooting from the baseline. It's too long. And Saforza battling for the rebound underneath, but left it on the floor for Russell. 
Now it's Milik running the floor, layup, yes. Utica 41, Valley 38. Uh, layup missed by Biscay. Holman has the offensive boards and kisses it off the glass for two. Eight for Holman. 41-40. We could beat 100 in this game. Codes cross-court pass knocked away. A steal for Lance Miller. Miller floating in. Layup too strong. Holman again on the rebound. And a whistle stops play. A foul, I think, on Josh Code for bumping Holman before he can pass off. Well, Steve, we may reach 100 in this game easily. I'm a little surprised. Waking Valley, both Coach Torbert and the Utica, Coach Harmon said that he's more of a pattern, half-court coach. He's got 40 points, and we got a minute to play in the second quarter. With the pace as quick as it is, Coach Torbert elects to rest Clay Williams. He inserts Jared Day, the 6'3 junior. And also Travis Binkley waits at the scorer's table for Jimmy Holman, whose foul shot is short. Rebound Josh Code, who pulls up in the backcourt. One hands it across the floor to Russell. Russell right corner to Armstrong. Armstrong returns it to Russell on the wing. Now the lob. Cannon, who has good position, is layup strong. Miller rebounds. Miller forcing the action for Valley, and he's hammered by Dave Neelick. Referee a little late coming down, trailing the play. I think Kevin thought he had it, or uh, Milik had a clear block. It's his first. But we've got 57 seconds, 40-41. Without Williams, if I'm Utica, I go in for that pain area, and if you don't have the shot, draw the foul. Binkley spells Holman as Miller gets two foul shots. First one by Lance is good. He missed his first one. Now he's four of four from the line with six points. Miller has boosted his average to 12 points per game, and he averaged nine and a half rebounds coming in. Second foul shot is short. Binkley keeps it alive, but Code has it. Throws the outlet pass to Milik, who avoids Biscay and takes it the distance. Can't score on the layup. And Day bats the rebound to Biscay. Valley ball. Game tied at 41. Biscay lost it. Milik knocks it to Russell. Lead pass stolen again by Biscay. He'll throw the baseball pass down the floor, intercepted by Russell. Code works the right side, whipping it to Armstrong. Left side layup, good, with 29 seconds on the clock. 43-41 Redskins. Binkley passing to Miller, Code reaching in, and Code assessed the foul, his third. Code has a few choice words with the official. And he will join a duo of players, Hale and Barrasso already on the bench and as quick as pace as this game has been Steve they have called just about as much as they could call as far as fouls Ryan Wolf a 5'10 junior is in for code so three Redskins have three fouls and one Panther has three Lance Miller for one and one and he earns the bonus by converting the front end Miller has five in the quarter seven for the game, and if he can sink the second free throw, he'll tie it with 19 seconds to play to the half. And his foul shot is good. Exactly that. 43 all. Milk takes it, glance the clock. Milk could it go for one. Milik trapped, throws to Russell right side of the circle. Left hand pass back to Milik. Inside 10 seconds. Here's Russell finding Armstrong, shooting right corner and short off the rim, and time runs out in the first half. The crowd on its feet as both teams head to the locker room at halftime. A tie score after two quarters. Back with our halftime report from Licking Valley in a moment. It's Licking Valley 43 and Utica 43 on 101.7 WNKO. Put your foot down on quality floor coverings from... It's the highest gets the Pepsi and I go, you're on, dude. It's okay, the stereo's blasting. Mom's yelling, we'll try to jump in our beds. I'll like slam into the ceiling. When suddenly my brother makes like this awesome humongous leap. And he goes higher and higher right up the open second story window. Ah! And I freak. And I go, oh my God, I don't have my brother anymore. What am I going to tell mom and dad? And I go, run outside, look for a twisted mag of body. Only he's not there. Then I look in the bushes and there's my brother lying there. Okay, laugh. And I go, Mark, Mark, are you all right? I was really worried, dude. He 
he says, Ziggy, man, I'm tough to you or so concerned. I go, well, I'd have been, like, majorly bummed out if something had happened to that Pepsi, okay? Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. WNKO, Steve and Denny, I know you're concerned as long as, uh, as well as everybody else in Licking County about what's going on. No details yet on the Mideast situation. Everything has stayed relatively the same. I am monitoring CNN. If anything happens, I'll be sure to uh, break into the game. Right now, we're going to take you back to Licking Valley High School. It's the Utica, uh, Utica Redskins and the Licking Valley Panthers on WNKO Newark. Thank you very much, Mike. Here it's halftime where the score is 43-43. Denny, we've almost needed a fast-paced calculator or adding machine to keep track of the action as it's been racehorse basketball tonight from the start. Each team getting over 20 points in both the first and second quarters. The first period ended 23-21 Utica. Valley outscored the Redskins 22-20 in the second quarter and thus the 43-43 tie at halftime. Remember, the first game ended 69-60 in Utica's favor on December 7th, and we're almost to that many points already at halftime with the game tied at 43. Neither team has really been able to open up a sizable lead. Valley had an early 8-4 edge, 9-5 also, but then back came Utica. They were ahead a couple of times before the first quarter came to an end, and it seesawed through most of the second period as well. And this one's up for grabs as we head to the second half of play. Well, I think something we have to look at in the second half, Steve, is the foul situation. First quarter looked like Lincoln Valley was seriously going to get in foul trouble. In fact, with just over two minutes in the first quarter, Scott Bavar picks up his third personal. He has uh, joined Miller, Clay Williams, and uh, Biscay, I believe, has two apiece. But then the second...